everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I'm so happy to have you here today. Before we get started, be sure that you're subscribed here on YouTube, that way you don't miss out on any of the fun, crafty content we have coming. Now today's video, we are going to be featuring some really cool sublimation paints and markers from Artispree. These are a lot of fun to work with and I can't wait to show you two really cool projects. We're first going to make a hand-painted mug. This is really, really fun to do. You can do this with all your family members, get the kids involved, just have a good time with it. And then I'm also going to show you how to make a ceramic ornament from Craft Express. Again, a really fun way that you can use sublimation with the family to create a really cool keepsake. This is such a fun process. We're going to be using the Cricut Mug Press and the HTV Rode Auto Press for this. Just because I haven't used that Auto Press in a really long time and I just want to see how it does with a sublimation blank, a flat one like this, because you can see this disc is pretty thin. So we'll give it a shot and see how it does. I'm really excited. These are so fun to work with. They come in four colors and then there's also a white. Now the white is not going to print as white. It's just for... Uh, lightening up your colors. So if you want to take like this yellow and you want to lighten it up a little bit, you can put the white paint in it to make it a lighter yellow. You can also combine all the colors to make different colors. So if you're looking for something specific, there is a color chart on the Artistry website, which I will link down below for you. And I will link these paints down below for you as well. That way you can find everything if you want to make this fun craft. Now the cool thing is you don't need sublimation paper for this. You can just use a regular piece of copy paper and it works fine. I have a lot of sublimation paper so that's what I'll use but don't worry this does work with copy paper as well. So let's go ahead and get started. You can watch me paint really awful and make this fun mug. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. I am so excited to show you more about these artist free paints and then we also have the artist free sublimation markers so we're going to do a mug and an ornament but we're going to start with just an 11 ounce mug nothing super crazy but i think this is just such a fun way that you can craft get your family involved in crafting all the things so the first thing that i do is i'm going to cut my paper down i'm going to scooch these out of the way i'm just going to trim my paper down so that it is the mug size so i just kind of lay my mug on it and then i'm just going to cut across and it, this doesn't have to be straight because the design I'm doing isn't going to cover the whole mug um, so I'm not really worried about if the top is straight or not I just want like a general idea of how big I'm cutting now I am using sublimation paper it is blue on the back and then white on the front this is printers jack brand paper so then all I'm gonna do is just wrap this around my mug and just trim it off at the handle here and I'm trimming a little further over from the handle so that when I do wrap this it will go all the way around now like I said I'm not doing like the whole paper so that's partially why I can do it that way now I want to talk about the inks because that's what we're going to use here these are like the paints they're really fun they come in a red yellow blue black and then this is white however what I want you to understand is that this is not going to be white. So if you put this on something black, it will not show up. This is actually to use to lighten your colors because you can mix the colors to create other colors. Now I want to show you here, this is like just some paints I used before I didn't wash out, but that's what they look like dry. Now I don't really know exactly what I want to do on this mug. I am not, listen, I am not a painter. I am not someone who is really good with a brush. It is not a skill I possess. Um, so we're just kind of going to go for it and just sort of see what happens. Now I do recommend shaking up your paint and I'm just going to shake it a little bit here and you can actually use these like watercolors too. So if you just want to add a little bit of liquid to them, some water, you can do that. And the cool thing is it will kind of make it like a watercolor. It does make your paper pretty wet though. So just keep that in mind. The other thing I want to point out to you is I want you to see how pink the red looks. Don't worry, it does come out red because just like with sublimation ink in your printer, these colors are going to look a little bit different than they would if you were to put them you know, on the paper and then press them. They come out brighter once you've pressed. So I'm going to do blue. And I think we'll hold off on the black for just a little bit. We might add some accents really not sure what I'm making but I do want to use some of this lightning 
into the red because I want to turn it a little bit of a lighter red. So I haven't used the white at all yet. So I'm just going to add just a little drop or do. Now you can use any kind of paint brushes you want to. It's really up to you. I've got like a selection here. There's some sponge brushes, some thin brushes, some thicker brushes. It's really kind of up to you and what you're going to paint. So this is a really fun project too that you could do with kids, with, you know, your family, whatever you want to do with it. So um, it is kind of Halloween time. So I think actually what I want to do is do something kind of maybe a little more like Halloween themed. Now do keep in mind that just like sublimation, this is going to show up backwards. So like that little C is going to be the other direction. That was supposed to be a moon, but you know, some of us are not the best. Like I said, I'm not a good painter. So I'm going to make the moon and I'm going to add a little bit of kind of swirling to it just to kind of give it a little bit more of a organic look. And you can see how easy this is. You can really do anything you want. This is all a water soluble paint as well. So that's what's great about this. It's really easy to use. It's really easy to play with. I'm going to go ahead and put a little drip of red, I think, into our yellow and just see if we can make some orange. Because remember, red and yellow make orange, but we're going to see what we can come up with here. I don't know. There's a mixing chart that you can find on the Artist Free website. Uh, it's not quite the color I'm going for, but I think it's fine because we're just kind of playing. And that's one thing I will say, just sort of play with it and have fun. So I'm going to make a pumpkin, I think, or like the resemblance of a pumpkin. Like I said, some of us are not great artists. But that's what's really fun about crafting. You can do whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a certain way. So you can see I'm just using this just like I would any acrylic paint where you can just paint it on. You can actually use regular copy paper with this as well. You don't have to use sublimation. I just have a lot of sublimation paper. So that's what I chose to use. Let's make like a really little pumpkin. We'll do like just a little, just a little baby pumpkin over here. And we're gonna bring the markers in to kind of add some details and some other fun things. So now let's do something with blue because we have some blue. Um, oh, and we can do the black too. I still haven't used black. So let's get the black out really quick. And maybe we'll use the black to make like a little witch's hat or something. Now I'm going to show you this because the black looks really, really red in the jar, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure to shake it up. It will look black on your paper or like kind of gray, but it will look black when it presses. So you can see how gray it looks here. I promise you it presses super black and it looks really cool. So again, not an artist, gonna do my best. <laughs> I want to try to make a little bat, but like, again, I can't paint. I am not, I am not a skilled painter. So I'm just going to try to do what I can with my limited paint person skills. And honestly, for somebody who can't paint, I don't know, that kind of looks like a bat. Yeah. I mean, kind of. Listen, just lie to me. If it doesn't, it's fine. But just lie to me and tell me that that looks like a bat. I don't know. Um, but you can really go in and just kind of play with it. Do whatever you want to do. Let's do like kind of a background bat, maybe like kind of one that's like way off in the distance. And then we'll do like one down here. We'll do kind of a way off in the distance bat here. I think that looks pretty good. We'll add like another bat here. Honestly, I don't think those bats look horrific, okay? They're not great. They're not great. So now what you can really do is play around with these colors, have fun with it, and do whatever you want to do. So remember, I said we'd lighten up this um, red. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this together. Now this, like I said, should come out like a either lighter red or kind of more on the pink side, which is totally fine. I'm cool with that. And I think what I want to do is add like a couple pink pumpkins because I've seen some really neat colored pumpkins this year. We're going to go ahead and make a pink pumpkin. And let's put a little mini pink guy right here. Listen, is he round? He is not. That's okay. And then let's make kind of a oblongy shaped one. Like I said, we're going to go in with the markers because what's really fun is you can actually use these together. And I'm going to go in with the markers and add some details to our pumpkins. And like I said, do what you want. Have fun with it. There's no wrong way to do this. Now, the other cool thing is, like I said, we can mix colors to create other colors. 
So we know, let's do, um, we say red and yellow, or no, is it, what do blue and yellow make? They make green. So blue and yellow make green. Now, like I said, they have a chart on the website that kind of walks you through how to mix the colors. Have I used it? No. Should I? Absolutely. Um, now I just am washing these in a little bit of water over to the side and then I'm just going to do a quick dry over here because I don't really care if the colors mix too much. And then I'm just going to mix this up and let's see. Oh, that's kind of a cool blue. Oh, that's fun. It's like a tealy, greeny blue. That's a really fun color. Now keep in mind, it's not going to press this color. So that's why I say like mix some colors up, press something, just have fun with it. I'm going to add the stems to our pumpkins with this. Just gonna add some pumpkin stems and a little pumpkin stem. I think that's so cute, so fun. Should we do some vines? Why not? Let's let's take our chances and see how awful I can I can make these look. Because again, I can't paint to save my life. Never really been good at it. Always wanted to be. There are some beautiful artists that I'm like, I wish I could paint like you, uh, but I cannot. Actually, I don't think that's terrible. I think I did okay. Um, now, like I said, play with it, do what you wanna do. Mix your colors, make your own colors. Um, so we've got like this lighter red and this, um, we can take a little bit of blue and mix that in. I'm just gonna go ahead and wash off this paintbrush. And like I said, these are water-based, so what's great is if you wanna do this with your kids and they get it on their hands, it washes right off. If you wanna make pet paw prints, totally can do that. There's a lot you can do with them. You don't just have to, you know, use them just as a single color. You don't just have to paint them. I have lots of fun ideas and we're gonna do something really fun with the uh, ornament here and I'm gonna show you that one. So I've got this purple and like, I'm just gonna make a little witch hat over here because this feels a little unbalanced. So I'm just gonna make a little witch's hat over here. I know it doesn't really make sense to have a witch's hat just chilling. But like, it's fine, whatever. Do what you want. And maybe we make some purple bats, right? Why not? The, that speaks to me. I think we can make some purple bats. So I'm gonna take some of the paint off and I'm just gonna kinda dib, 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 dab, dib, 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 dab, and make some little purple bats. Are they good bats? They are not. Will they be a fun color? Uh, probably so. Like I said, have fun. You know, nobody's gonna tell you your art is bad. And if they do, you, you just walk away from them. Those are not your people. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish these last couple little bats. I think that's pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is stick all my paintbrushes just in my water. I'll get that all cleaned up later. But we wanna let this dry for a little while so that all of our paints are good and dry so that we can add some little details to our pumpkins with our markers. Now you can use a little heat gun, you can use um, a blow dryer if you wanna get the drying process a little bit faster, but honestly, I'm just gonna let this air dry. I'm gonna go ahead and wash all these out. You can just wash them out with regular lukewarm water, a little spongy sponge, and they'll come right out. Even the ones that I let sit for a couple days, they come right out, no problem. But I wanna show you those colors we mixed. Look how fun. And then notice I do have paint on my hands. It's gonna wash off, no problem. So we've got let this dry and then we're gonna be ready to print on it with our uh, markers and then we can put it on our mug. While we have our pumpkins drying, I'm gonna do the ornament because I just am gonna use the paint that we used before. I was gonna get new paint, but why waste? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this ceramic ornament from Craft Express and I'm just gonna trace around it. That way I know like where the ornament is and I'm just using a Sharpie. You can use a pencil, pen, whatever you got. That way I just sort of know where the ornament is while I'm doing this. Now what I'm gonna do, and you can do this with your family, with your friends, whatever you wanna do, is I'm actually going to use my fingerprint and make some little pumpkins. Cause who says that these have to be Christmas ornaments? So I'm gonna use my pointer finger and I'm just gonna put it into the orange paint. And I just wanna make sure that I kind of have a decent amount. So you can see I've got it on my finger and then I'm just gonna dab it on to the uh, ornament and then you can just wipe it on a paper towel and then let's use this purple the purple we have quite a bit of so i do want to make sure that i kind of wipe that off a little bit so i'm going to just dab it on to the paper towel a little before i put it on to my paper and then i'm going to do that one and then um we'll do green why not we'll do a green one we're just going to be messy it's fine like i said this washes off super easy so i wouldn't worry too much about it and then um, my thumb's already messy. What the heck, we'll use black. Let's do a black one. So I've got quite a bit of ink on that. So I just wanna dab that off. 
and put a little bit of black ink on that. And you can really go crazy, do whatever you wanna do, but you can see that I've kept it within the circle. Then from here, I'm gonna let that dry. Once that's dry, again, we can come up with the markers and add some fun things. Now, obviously, hands are pretty dirty, so what's great about this, again, it's a water-soluble uh, product, so you're gonna be able to wipe this off pretty easy with some baby wipes or just wash your hands with some soap and water. Now we're gonna add some details with these sublimation markers. So these are great, they're really, really fun. I have another set that I've used, I haven't used this set yet, but I'm gonna pour them out so you guys can see all the colors, because you get a ton of different colors. Red, orange, green, purple, blue, gray, brown, black, yellow, and pink. So again, these are gonna look a little bit different when you write with them than they will when you press them. So this is a fine tip marker, super easy to use. And we're just gonna draw some little pumpkin faces. They don't have to be anything crazy. They don't have to be perfect. So I'm just gonna kind of start with some little triangle eyes on this one. I was gonna do circles, but I changed my mind. And then I'm just gonna add a little smile face. Again, you don't have to do anything too crazy, but you can see you can use the markers to add a little bit of the detail to these. So really, really fun way to do this. Such a good time. So let's make this guy have some upside down triangle eyes. Listen, I'm not somebody who has really good at carving pumpkins either. So we're just gonna do the best with what we got here for our face. And then we'll give him a little tooth and there, and then we'll just color this in. So like I said, using the markers with the paint is a really fun way just to add some additional kind of details to your pumpkin. So I'm gonna go ahead through here, draw some pumpkin faces, draw some little details, and then from there, we can press this to our mug. I tried to write 2023, but I wanted to show you, so I wrote the three the right way because I want to show you what it looks like if you don't put it backwards. But I just added some little faces, I added some craters to the moons, and then I wrote Happy Halloween the right way, and then 2023, and I messed up the three. No big deal. So now let's set that over to the side and we'll do our ornament. So same idea, we need to write backwards for this. So I'm just gonna try to kind of curve this word around the circle here. I'm terrible at writing ends backwards. They always look ridiculous. So then we'll put Halloween and then, like I said, I'm really bad at writing backwards twos, which yes, I know are just fives, but they always end up looking like S's. And see like doing that, it's a five, but then when you write it the right way, it looks like a two, I don't know. I'm really bad, so I think we're just gonna skip that part and we're just going to put a happy Halloween and then let's do, um, we'll do S P O O K Y. So like I said, writing backwards, not the easiest. And then let's use purple since we haven't used that one yet. And we'll write my name down here at the bottom again, poorly because I can't write backwards. I do better with capital letters backwards, but I'm still it just still looks like a four-year-old did it, but it's okay. Super fun way to use these markers. So let me get these put out of the way. I'm going to get the Cricut Mug Press out, and then we're going to use the HTV Ronked Auto Press for this. This is for our little ornament. I'm going to let this dry just a little bit longer because the one fingerprint isn't quite dry. But once that's dry, I'll go ahead and show you how to tape this on. I'm going to let the uh, Happy Halloween dry just a little bit longer as well for the mug. But I'll get everything set up and then I'm going to show you how we're going to tape this on, make sure everything's good to go, and press. We're ready to tape our design to our mug, our very artistic design. So what you're going to need is some heat tape. You're gonna need some of the protective paper. This is from Artist Free, butcher paper, parchment paper, all that stuff works. Um, I have a fun little tape dispenser that pre-cuts my tape for me. So what I'm gonna do is put this on to my mug and I just wanna kind of center it with the handle. So like, I gotta look where the witch hat is because the witch hat sits a little further over from the rest of the design. And then I just kind of get it on to the mug where I'm happy. I think that looks 
pretty decent. So I'm going to take a piece of tape and I just want to put one piece over here on one side and one piece over there on the other side. Now I just kind of going to go around, make sure it looks good. I don't usually tape my designs a ton. You'll see people who go crazy and tape like every inch of them. I don't believe in that. I don't have any issues not doing that. But for this one, I am going to tape these little edges down right here just because they are sticking up a little bit. And I just want to make sure it's well held down and it's not going to move at all when I press it. Then I want to take the butcher paper, the protective paper, whatever it may be, and wrap it around the mug. Now you can see that it goes a little too far over the handle. So I do want to trim it down just like I did for the paper, but I want to make sure that this protective paper covers everywhere that there is print because this is going to prevent that print from leaking through on to my press. That's really important because you don't want to damage your press at all. So just like I did with the design, I'm going to tape it down with a little bit of the heat tape and I'm just going to trim this edge and this little edge. That way it sits a little bit nicer and neater. And then I'm just going to get a couple more pieces of tape. Now you do want to make sure that all of your paper and your uh, butcher paper and all that is pretty tight to your mug. So I am just sort of pulling this and sometimes it does come untaped. That's okay. No big deal. It happens, but you do want to make sure that it's sitting there really good and tight. So I'm going to tape this side down first and then I just want to make sure that I pull this side good and tight. All right. I think we're good. It looks like everything is well covered. I'm going to get that piece of butcher paper out from the inside. Now we're going to go ahead and turn on our mug press and get ready to press this so you can see what it looks like all kind of put together. We've got butcher paper, we've got regular paper with the sublimation design on it and our mug. We've got our Cricut mug press plugged in. So the first thing that you need to do is turn it on using the power button up here at the top. Now you're going to see that your power button is kind of orange or red. That just means that it's heating up. So you want to give it a few minutes. It usually heats up within about, I would say like four to seven minutes and it will beep when it's ready and then we can put our mug inside. The press is ready and you can tell because the green light is on on the top. So all you simply need to do is take your mug and slide it in to this top area. You wanna make sure that your handle here is pretty well centered in the opening. And then you press down this lever and I like to kind of keep an eye on that handle. We're gonna press this down and then this is going to heat for about six minutes. You'll see the little lights here on the top. I will try to catch the beep that ends the press. Sometimes I miss it, but I'll try to catch it for you guys and you'll get to see how cool this mug looks. Now that it's beeped, that it's finished, go ahead and open up your lever. Now I do have a heat press mat here. You can touch the handle. That part's not hot, but the rest of the mug is going to be quite warm. I'm going to go ahead and turn my mug press off and I'm going to slide it out of the way because I want you guys to be able to see the mug. So with the Cricut Mug Press, I do almost always burn my paper, it's fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this paper off. This is the protective paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and peel all that off. And then I'm gonna pull some tape off. And now we're gonna be able to get our paper off so that we can see what our mug actually looks like. I think this is gonna be so super cute. Now I would recommend making sure that you have some tweezers or something to help you with the tape if you struggle a little bit. Usually I can just pop it off pretty easy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give you a quick little kind of view, but it is hot so I am gonna set this down and let this cool off before I show you the final product. We're ready to tape down our ornament. Now I do realize that I accidentally wrote where the little hole is, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is, that's why I have it kind of outlined. I'm gonna line this up right where I want it and then I'm gonna use bigger pieces of tape because this is a bigger item. So I'm gonna use the little tape dispenser on the side and I'm gonna pull off a couple bigger pieces of tape and I'm just gonna put some tape on the back. I'm gonna reline this up in just a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple bigger pieces and lay them on the edges of my design. Then I'm gonna get this lined up where I want it on my design. That's why I outlined, because now I can see where the outline is. And then you wanna press your tape down and that's just gonna hold your design to your blank. Then if you want to, you can absolutely trim off the excess because you can always use the excess sublimation with the paints again if you want to. So I do tend to trim it down a little. Then you're gonna want a piece of the protective paper again. Now for this one, I'm gonna sandwich it in between. So I'm gonna cut a piece and I'm just gonna trim that off 
And then what I want to do is I'm just going to put it in between like this and then I'm going to fold this over just to make a little envelope that's going to contain my ornament. Now we're going to get the HTV Romp Press all heated up and ready to go and I'm going to show you how we press this. We're using the HTV Auto Press so first thing we want to do is turn it on and we need to change our temperature and our time. For the ceramic ornament it recommends 360 degrees for about four minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and press up on our temperature little pad and we're going to change this to 360. And then I'm going to change our time here. And our time they want four minutes so that is a whole lot of seconds. That is 240 seconds. So we're going to go for a little while here. Now this one only goes up to 99 so that's kind of a bummer. But if we just run it um, a couple times through it will be just fine. Once the press is ready, you want to go ahead and take your ornament and place it on to the mat. You want to make sure that it is paper side up. Then when you press, like you push the drawer in, you got to make sure it pushes the drawer all the way in until it snaps and then it will press down. Now this press is not my favorite press, probably wouldn't really recommend this one. Um, I prefer regular clamshell, but I did want to see how it did with this sublimation paint. Um, especially since it can only go up to 99 seconds and this does require more time But we're just gonna see how it does so I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish pressing when it's done I'll show you what it looks like I'm gonna recommend that you have heat gloves ready um, Once this is done you can go ahead and pull the drawer out this handle doesn't get hot, but your uh, Sublimation blank will be very hot So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn it off because obviously I'm not gonna use it anymore And then I'm gonna put my gloves on and I am gonna take all the paper off so that we can see what our ornament looks like. Let's get all that off. It looks pretty good actually for not pressing it the full like questioned time. Looks pretty darn good considering. I think the colors are pretty nice. Yeah, I think it did a nice job. So I'm gonna get you guys on with these cool along with that mug and then I'll show you what they all look like. I wanted to show you how these came out. I think they came out super, super cute. Now, my finger did smudge the paint right there between the little pink pumpkin and the hat, but still came out really cute. And I also wanted to show you the marker faces came out really, really, really nice. Even my funny blobby bat came out pretty cute. Now, here's what I was talking about. Um, obviously, the twos look fine, but that three is backwards. And then there is our little moon who looks like he's screaming, but whatever. I think this came out so cute. These are really, really fun. And you can see the different colors and how well they worked. But then I also want to show you this one because I think this one, again, came out really fun. Just some little fingerprints and my name. I just want to show you that you could absolutely take and put your kid's handprints on something and this paint is safe. I wiped it off with some baby wipes and it was absolutely perfectly fine. No big deal. Or you can just wash your hand in some soapy water. Really easy to clean up and I think the colors come out so vibrant. So this is just the black, plain as black. And then these are the colors that we mixed. We used the markers for the writing and like I said, you have to write backwards, which is not a skill I possess. But I think it came out pretty cool, even though I did forget the extra E in Halloween. So it says Halloween. It's fine. No big deal. We were just testing and having fun with it. But I did spell it right on our mug. So, you know, we're going with it. But I really think these paints are a great way to really get in some craft time with friends, with family, and just have fun with it. You're never going to be a perfect artist, and that's part of the fun with making crafts and making art. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I've got everything we used in this video linked for you, so you can easily find it, so you can make your own fun crafts. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, happy crafting!